This lesson deals with resistor inductor Laplace transform examples. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 10 starting on page 8. Consider the following example with a 9 volt battery, a single pole single throw switch that's going to close at t equals 0, and a series R and L. Can you transform this circuit into the S domain and use Laplace transforms to solve for the voltage across the inductance and the current through it? We're going to use the same 5 step algorithm we did for RC circuits. So the first step is to find the initial conditions. Now with the switch open, there's no current flowing in this loop, and so the current in the inductance is equal to zero. Step two is to transform the circuit into the S domain and to use our equivalent circuit models. So for T less than zero, we have no current flowing, so there's no drop across this resistor and no drop across the inductor. So we have zero volts here. When T is equal to zero plus, we have nine volts. So we have a step function going from zero to nine volts between these two wires. We'll show that as nine over S, 10K resistor, and then I have an impedance of S times L. L was one millihenry. And then I have an initial condition, which is in parallel with this inductor, but it's equal to zero. So I'm just gonna leave it as an open circuit. Step three in the algorithm then is to do the S domain circuit analysis. Let's solve for the voltage across the inductance and the current through it. The voltage across is the voltage divider. So it's gonna be our voltage nine over S, and then the impedance 10 to the minus three S, or one milli times S, divided by that plus 10K. Now the S and the S here cancel, pull out a 10 to the minus three, and so we just have nine, and then we're gonna divide this by 10 to the minus three, so we have 10 to the fourth, and then times 10 to the three, or 10 to the seventh. The current would just be the voltage here, divided by the impedance, which is one milli times S, so 10 to the minus three S, and so you can write this as a reciprocal of 10 to the third over S, times nine over S plus 10 to the seventh. Step four is to perform the partial fraction expansion if needed. For our voltage, we already have it in a form that we can use our table in chapter nine. But for the current, I have an S and an S plus 10 to the seventh in the denominator. So I could write that as some K1 over S plus K2 over S plus 10 to the seventh. Find the value of K1 by multiplying this expression by S and then letting S equal zero. So then the S's cancel and I get nine times 1000 divided by zero plus 10 to the seventh. And that turns out to be nine times 10 to the minus fourth. Find K2 by multiplying S plus 10 to the seventh times our expression. And so again, we'll have a term cancellation and we're gonna let S equal minus 10 to the seventh. We've got 10 to the third times nine divided by a minus 10 to the seventh. That gives me a minus nine times 10 to the minus fourth. Step five is to find the inverse Laplace transform. So our voltage is just nine over S plus 10 to the seventh. So this is gonna be equal to nine times E to the minus alpha T where alpha is 10 to the seventh. Take the reciprocal of that, and that's 100 nanoseconds. So again, putting this in the form of e to the minus t over tau times u of t. The current was equal to 900 micro divided by s minus 900 micro divided by s plus 10 to the seventh. So this is our step function, so we're simply going to have 900 micro times u of t, and then here minus 900 micro, and then alpha is equal to 10 to the seventh, so we have e to the minus alpha times t. And writing this as the reciprocal of 10 to the seventh, we would have 100 nanoseconds. Pull out the common 900 micro, and you've got 900 micro times one minus e to the minus t over tau times u of t, and the units here are amps. These are exactly the same values we found in ECE 201 in chapter seven on pages 14 to 15. Let's do another example from ECE 201. This was in chapter seven on pages 16 through 18. Here I've got a 10 volt source through a single pole double throw switch hooked up into an RL network, and at t equals zero, the switch switches from this position to this position. We use a Laplace transform to solve for the current I of t. We'll again use our five-step algorithm. The first one is to find the initial condition. When we're in this switch position a long time, the inductor looks like a short circuit. All of this 10 volts is across the 50 ohm resistor. So the current that's flowing in here is just 10 volts divided by 50 ohms, and all that current goes into the short, taking the path of least resistance back. So our initial condition then is 200 milliamps. Our second step in the algorithm is to transform our circuit into the S domain. For T less than zero, we've taken into account what's gonna happen. Just erase this right now. And so we've got this current taken care of, which is the current of the inductor. And then for T equals zero plus, this voltage jumps from 10 volts to minus 10 volts. And so all we care about here is for T greater than zero, and this node voltage here just jumps to minus 10 volts. So you can think of that just as a step function. So replace these switches and these batteries with just simply a step function of a minus 10 divided by S. This is shown on the next page. Now the model for inductor is an inductance with a impedance of S times L, and then an initial condition with a current 
pointing in this direction equal to our initial condition, which was 200 milliamps, and then divided by S as a step function. Step three then is to perform the S domain circuit analysis. Well, here I've got two sources, so I could use superposition to find the results. So let's set this source equal to zero and find the current I sub L of S due to the first source, which is our step function of a minus 10 over S. Since I'm looking for a current, maybe I could use current divider. So let's just do a source transformation on this. So I'll have a 50 ohms in parallel with these two nodes, and then a current pointing down, because I've got the plus sign here, of the voltage, which is 10 divided by S, and then divided by 50, which is going to be 1 over 5S. And so my current in this direction is going to divide up between these three elements. Current in this direction would be a negative 1 over 5S, and we could use our admittance current divider. So that would be the admittance of this element, which is 1 over 0.15s divided by the sum of the three admittances. So 1 over 50, 0.15s, and then 1 over 75. Multiply numerator and denominator by the product of these three terms. The numerator will cancel this term. We'll just have the 50 times 75. This term will have the 75 and the 0.15s. This will likewise, again, have the 50 and the 75. And then this term will have the 50 and the 0.15s. Let's multiply all this out. 50 times 75 is 3,750. This product over here is 11.25. This is again 3.75K, and then this is equal to 7.5S. So let's put together the things that multiply S. So the 7.5 plus 11 and a quarter is 18.75S, and then plus 3.75K, similar number in the numerator, and then minus 1 over 5S. Let's factor out an 18.75, multiply that by 5, and divide that into 3.75. That turns out to be equal to 40. And we're just left with S times the quantity of S, and then this term here divided by 18.75 is actually equal to 200. Okay, so that's the value of I sub L due to the first source. Now let's find I sub L due to the second source. Let's set our voltage source equal to zero. And so I've got this circuit to analyze. So let's put these two resistors that are in parallel here into one resistance. 50 in parallel with 75. Product over the sum it turned out to be 30. So this current is flowing into the combination of those two parallel elements, and then we've got this remaining circuit. Again, you could use the current divider. Current that's entering this node, some goes this way and some goes this way. We could ignore the ground symbol because nothing else is hooked to ground. But if you want to find the current in this element, which is our I sub L due to the second source, take the other impedance, which is 0.15S, over that plus 30 ohms, and multiplying that by our current, 200 milli over S. Pull out a 0 0.15, 0 0.15 they'll cancel, and then dividing 30 by 0 0.15 is 200. And this is just equal to 0.2. We can add the two results together and get our value for the current in the inductor. So here's our first term plus our second term. I have a common denominator, so I'm just going to add these two terms, and I'll pull out a 0.2. So I got 0.2 times the quantity S, and then I'll take this and divide it by 0.2, which is equal to 200. Our next step is to perform the partial fraction expansion. And so from our last result, we had an S and an S plus 200 in the denominator, so we could write our expression then as some K1 over S plus K2 over S plus 200. So we take our expression that we found, we're going to multiply it by S and let S equal 0. Again, we'll get a term cancellation. So I've got 0.2 times minus 200 over 200, and that's equal to minus 0.2. Multiplying our expression again, but now S plus 200, and letting S equal minus 200, we're going to again get a term to cancel. And then I've got 0.2 and then I've got minus 200 plus a minus 200, so minus 400 over minus 200. That turned out to be 0.4. Then our step five, then is take the inverse Laplace transform. And so I've got minus 0.2 over S plus 0.4 over S plus 200. This is just our step function with a scale factor of minus 0.2 times again U of T. And then I have 0.4 here times E to the minus alpha T, which would be E to the minus 200 T. Let's write this as one over, one over 200, and that'd be five milli. So I have minus 200 milli, plus 400 milli e to the minus t over tau, times u of t, amps, and again, engineering notation. In ECE 201 in chapter 7, we also find the voltage across the output terminals, and we could do that by doing, likewise, a Laplace transform analysis, and then take the inverse transform. The inductor is in parallel with a series combination of a 50 ohm and a 25 ohm. I'll actually go back and look at the original schematic. That's just a voltage divider. So if I knew the voltage across the inductor, I could then find the voltage across the 25 ohm resistor. But V is equal to L di dt, so I could just simply take the derivative of this. So L was 150 millihenries, 400 milli, and I have e to the ax, and the derivative is equal to a e to the ax. A here is a minus 1 over 5 milli, and e to the ax is just be e to the minus t over 
five milliseconds, and then times u of t, and then our voltage divided here would be 25 over 75. If you multiply that out, you wind up getting minus four times e to the minus t over tau, where tau is five milliseconds, times u of t. It's exactly the same thing we found in ECE 201 in chapter seven on pages 16 to 18. And these are some examples of resistor-inductor switching problems using the Laplace transform to solve for our unknowns.